Pulmonary arterial hypertension is defined as a mean pulmonary artery pressure greater than 25 millimeters mercury with a normal wedge pressure that is less than 15 millimeters mercury and a PVR greater than three woods unit. So basically it implies an elevation of pulmonary artery pressures with, without evidence of any left heart disease or valvular disease. So implying a pre-capillary process. I think uh, the major challenges in diagnosis of pulmonary hy arterial hypertension is that it's a diagnosis of exclusion. So many, many different diseases can cause an elevation of pulmonary arterial pressure. So to make a diagnosis of pulmonary arterial hypertension, we have to do a full workup to exclude other conditions that may be contributing to the elevation of PA pressures. So the challenge is to do a complete workup to exclude left heart disease, chronic thromboembolic disease, underlying lung disease and other uh, diseases such as sarcoid and sickle cell anemia that may be associated with elevated PA pressures. So because many different conditions can lead to elevation of PA pressures, so the classification basically tries to separate this out. So when we say pulmonary arterial hypertension, that is, implies a precapillary process, which, implies, uh, which is, could be idiopathic or related to connective tissue disorders or protopulmonary hypertension, HIV, and so forth. The other conditions that can lead to elevated PA pressures, such as left heart disease, underlying lung disease, chronic thromboembolic disease, or a mishmash of conditions such as sarcoid and all, need to are classified in group five. So when we diagnose pulmonary arterial hypertension, we have to exclude all the other groups. So once we do the complete workup and make sure that the patient truly has pulmonary arterial hypertension, then we have to assess how sick or advanced the disease is. For patients who are relatively early in disease or their cardiac outputs are still preserved, we can start with oral treatments, which are uh, either endothelial receptor antagonist or PD-5 inhibitors or uh, direct cyclic guanylase um, stimulators. In sicker patients, the treatments of choice becomes prostacyclins, which can be either given as infusion therapies or a subcutaneous infusion, inhaled or oral. I think the, the greatest advance in the last few years has been just the expansion of therapies. When we first started 15 years ago, all we had was infusion therapy for these uh, patients. Now we have different subclasses and the availability of oral therapies for these patients. As we move further, what we need to do is to be better at phenotyping these patients so we can direct these uh, therapies better to, pay, uh, to a specific patient.